Alicia Brunsell, that's my husband, AJ. Uh, we're from Brex Enterprises, so we want a construction company out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We have about 40 employees, and we're coming up on our ninth year in business. So um, we've grown the business ourselves. We do pipeline work, uh, general construction development, hauling. Um, what else do we do? Painting. Yeah, uh, equipment painting. We do equipment, equipment painting repair. and maintenance. So we try to do a well, wide ver variety of things. Very vertically integrated. You know, that's what we try to do with everything. So. Yeah, so imposter syndrome. I actually heard about this two years ago. So it's a term used in pretty much how you self-assess yourself. So when you look at success and what you find success for yourself, there are um, a, a number of different kind of terms you can use in how you judge yourself. So essentially, you're pretty much calling yourself a fraud, and you don't deserve the success you get. And wow. What happens is, is this happens a lot in high achieving people. So in reality, these people are achieving great things. They're doing good things in business. They're doing good things in their lives. But yet how they got there, they might question or what they missed out on might question their success as well. So the example I gave in the scenario was, you know, I've, I've witnessed AJ do this many times, and he'll go to shake somebody's hand, and somebody will say, hey, congratulations on your success. This is, you run a great company. Yeah, and then uh, my, my natural instinct is always to um, kind of deflect. Like I, I'll either say, yeah, we're really lucky, or I have a great team behind me, or um, I just never want to seem like I'm boasting. You know, I'm, I'm just not that guy. Um, and then in my mind, you know, I don't necessarily always think we are successful. You know, I always think about the missed opportunity. So the way that my mind works, like, yeah, we might have accomplished this goal, but I missed out on something else that I, that I fell short on. So that's all I think about, you know, so I turn the page on the goal, right? And I just ignore it. And then I just keep moving forward, which, you know, for everybody else on your team can be exhausting, you know, and it's, it's really bad for your culture, you know, and this is why, you know, we talk about this, we're talking about this imposter syndrome, because a lot of these people that were at this, you know, event are high achieving people that are, have big goals, right? And as soon as they reach the big goals, they forget to celebrate it, you know, or um, they lose confidence, you know, because maybe they don't reach the big goal, right? Um, and that's just kind of where I play into it. You know, we'll probably go a little more into where Alicia's, like, stance is also. But. So there's actually five different types of um, imposter syndromes that you could fall into. So different categories are you could be the expert. So you judge your success based on knowing it all. So I tend to, I tend to fall here. So... Um, you know, I used to go to bid meetings as a new business owner with him and coming in from a different industry, I thought I had to know everything. And so when people would ask me, hey, can you do X, Y, or Z? And I didn't know, I felt like a complete fraud. I felt like I'm not successful, I'm the business owner and I should know these things. That's the expert. There's also the natural genius. So people judge themselves on the ability to be successful because they know things automatically. When in reality, we're business owners, we have to learn a lot and we need to keep learning. So just because you don't know something first and, and right away doesn't mean you're not successful. And we're developing, we're learning in our mistakes. You know, that's, that's the best thing about you know, being in business. You, know, you don't grow in your successes. You know, I said this in there, you know, we've never grown in our successes, ever. We always grow in our failures. So we've had a lot of things that happen. You know, that everybody can look at it and say, yeah, that was terrible. But it changed the way that our company operates, and we are better moving forward from it. So. Yeah, in our company, we recently went through a mistake, and we're like, you know what? This is actually good. We, we, we learned from it, and it's not going to happen again. So I, I definitely can relate to that. Yeah. Yeah, and so some of the other ones are, um, and Brittany Almond, she's, she's a big one for this. And I think you fall into this one, too, is the Superman or the Superwoman. So you judge your success based on how many things you can do at one time and doing it all. So him driving on the side of the road and 
evaluating his success based on his competitors doing stuff that he's not doing, that's him being an, an imposter. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, just to kind of explain that, you know, she said, I'm driving, the, like, I'll literally drive down the road and I see somebody else doing a job, my mind media go immediately goes to, you know, why are we not doing that? You know, why, why did I miss that op opportunity? I didn't even know about that, you know? So, and it's not the rest th right thing to do. We're still working. You know, we're still succeeding. But in my mind, that's a failure because I didn't wow. do it, you know? And, and um, the, so we covered super, Superman, we covered Natural Genius, the expert, there's also the soloist. There's certain people that fall into a category where they feel they need to do everything themselves. Yeah. So there's a lot of people in the room that have trouble delegating things, and they think just because they're not doing it doesn't mean it's going to be done right. I see some smiles. So Yeah, I, I'm going through an issue where I, I'm learning to trust, specifically Andrew, <laughs> so um, to delegate, like, I want to do it all and to be like, all right, I can't do it all. Here you go. Yep. So I definitely am in that process. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think, too, once you find those soloists, when they start delegating, sometimes those tasks get done even better because that person, that's their sole role or that's their sole job. Yeah. Um, I think I'm missing one. Which one am I missing? That was five, right? We got four. We got expert, Superman, Superwoman, yeah. the genius, and the, the soloist. soloist. And then there was a uh, – hang on. It'll come to me. That's right. So the important thing is that, you know, some people say, well, isn't this just somebody being humble? Um, isn't this, how do you compare this to somebody that's just humble? So the main difference is, is when you're humble, you really, you really feel successful. So you know you're successful. You just don't want to brag. You don't want to tell everybody. You don't want to seem, you know, like a braggart. The difference with imposter syndrome is you are actually judging yourself and not feeling successful. When in reality, nobody else is judging you that way. It's only yourself. So part of the presentation I gave is actually there's, there's some no research and thoughts out there that you can actually tie imposter syndrome to dollars lost. So here's an easy example. There's a job out there. You know, you can do part one, two, and three of the job, but part four you might be a little uncertain about. So your imposter syndrome says, oh, I don't know how to do that. I need to know it all. I'm not going to bid the job. So that's one scenario. You don't bid it. If you ignore your imposter syndrome and work with that imposter syndrome and say, I'm going to bid it and, you know, I'm going to do this as like a contingency plan. Well, hey, that's a $10,000 job. You got yourself another job. That job then leads to X, Y, and Z. So the thing about imposter syndrome is you have to identify it first. So you have to realize it and then know your actions moving forward could be affected. And as business owners, so many things limit you. Uh, you know, whether it's the environment, the economy, your competitors, uh, social media, you don't need yourself limiting yourself. And so that's the important thing. And I think that's why it's resonating so much with so many people. And you don't want to seem vulnerable, you know, at least in my case. You know, I was raised, you know, we were always like the tough guys, you know, like every boy in my family was, you know, you didn't cry, you didn't do it. Like you showed toughness all the time, you know. So every time that I show invulnerability, to me, it's weakness, right? So, I'm, as the superhero, you know, quote unquote, uh, my my point is, you know, wh what's the next thing I can do? So, because every time we fall short, that's a, that's a failure on me, you know. So, I mean, in, a, in Alicia's case, you know, she is definitely by far the expert. Like, she is the person that, you know, if she doesn't know everything about everything, you know, she can't. She she declassifies herself. You know, that she's not worthy to be. You know, the the business owner of Brex Enterprises, right? You know, um, but she brings a different skill set to the table, you know, that is something we need. You know, I bring a skill set that I, I understand the processes of what we're doing. You know, she doesn't need to be the expert at everything, you know, but, you know, if you want to and she wants to manage it better, she asks why. She asks why our foreman's, hey, why are we doing this? What, like, what is the reason? And then she can learn it and then it makes her feel better about it, you know, so... I mean, there's a lot of ways you can combat it, you know. Yeah, and I think the really good thing about this conference is, you know, I identify things he doesn't identify in himself. Yeah. And, and vice versa. So the powerful thing today is, you know, I, I challenge people to look at their spouse, look at their partner, and see what category you think they fit in, and then ask them what category they think they fit in, and see the differences. And part of combating imposter syndrome is that, is using your, your network, 
using your friends, your family, um, staying positive, but overall is just recognizing, you know, the impact you could have on your future from thinking those thoughts. Yeah, I'm curious how you guys uh, keep your marriage uh, growing and intact when you're managing 40 people. You said you had 40 employees. So, I mean, that's a lot of responsibility. How do you uh, keep, the, keep the marriage healthy? So, uh, I'll give my viewpoint on it first. Uh, so, Alicia is very, we have two very different skill sets. You know, Alicia is very task oriented, you know, very structured, very um, system oriented. I am the yes man. Like, I am 100% like the what we're going to do. I don't necessarily figure out how we're going to do it. I just say what we're going to do. And then I say, let's do it. Like, put it to my team. You know, and so we complement each other, which, um, where the 40 people really came in, you know, and helped us was, um, was where Alicia came in. You know, she has the system background. Like, she came from corporate America. She was worked in engineering before. And um, in corporate America, they have a system for everything, right? Yeah. So Sometimes to a fault. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, so when you want to have 40 people, you know, that are all have the same mindset and are doing the same things, you can't have one leader that's saying, oh, this is how we do it. No, you have to have systems saying this is how we do it. So Alicia, you know, in the last couple of years here has developed a lot of the systems, well, whether it's training programs and um, just basically way we, ways we hire people, uh, the, just the way that we operate in general is a lot due to her. So I, I gave a lot of credit. Tell to me her. a little bit more about hiring. We get asked that one of my most frequently asked questions. How do I get good people? I mean, they can go work in the air conditioning and get paid more. How are you going to get somebody to come out and sweat and work in the trades? You know, whether it's hardscaping, landscaping, construction, it's a, it's hard work. How are you hiring people that are actually reliable? Uh, my answer probably two years ago would be a lot different than it is now. It's very hard. It's, it's a lot harder now. Um, I think what we do is what we find is we really put a focus on the process of hiring um, a lot more than we did before because we'd have a lot of turnover. We'd have guys come in and say, hey, I can work hard or I want to travel. And then within a week, they were gone. So, so we really put emphasis on checking backgrounds, um, <laughs> doing the upfront work, and really checking people's references. After that, we try to focus on employee retention. So, you know, it's not just the hiring piece. It's the actually keeping, keeping your the employees. 40, yeah. And you want to keep good employees. So you have to give them benefits other than money. We've actually pulled our employees and said, why are you here? Why do you stay? What's most important in your job? And nine out of ten times, surprisingly, the answer was not money. It was mentorship, uh, training, ability to grow. It wasn't money. Yeah. Granted, there are some people that strictly what drives them. But I think as, as a whole, right now it's hard to find people. But when you do find them, I think the more important thing people need to talk about is that retention of, yeah. of how to keep good employees. That, and then uh, just to touch a note on that too, uh, you know, you have to be open to all the generations, you know, especially now. Like the younger generation coming in, they have such a giant opportunity. We're talking about the labor shortage, right? You know, and in any economy, when you have a shortage, what does the price do, right? It goes up. You know, so labor costs go up, right? They have an opportunity. You know, all these younger people have an opportunity to come into an industry that has a giant need, right? And they can learn. And there's so much more technology out there now. You don't have to kill yourself anymore. We just, Toro has this little buggy thing over here. This E-Dingo? Yeah, it's cool as hell. Like, I, I mean, I want it in my house just to ride around, you know, but... Um, Seriously, there's so much technology out there now that you don't have to work as hard as you used to. You know, you still have to work hard, right? But there's a lot of opportunity to make a really good living, you know, you get to be outside. You're not cooped up in an office. You know, there's an opportunity here. So, and you have to look at it differently. But you also have to be open to knowing how to motivate these younger people because they don't motivate the same way that they used to. You know, a lot of people now, you guys are doing it right here. You know, we have social media where... Social media is what is influencing these kids, right? This is what they care about. They care about, you know, TikTok, you know, and making TikTok videos. We make TikTok videos, and our guys love it. Like, they think it is awesome, you know, and that's part of the – I think that's probably one of the biggest things is, you know, you have, to, you have to be able to adapt, right? Adapt to what the workforce wants, you know, and right now the younger workforce doesn't necessarily work – do they want money? Yes, everybody wants money. 
but they want to have recognition, you know, on their social media. So that their girlfriend says, hey, I saw you online. That was so cool. Like, it, you know, and we literally have that in our company now. So I can't say where to find people because that is hard right now. Yeah. A lot of people don't want to work. Yeah. But once, once I think a couple things change in the economy a little bit, there will be a lot more people looking for work. And it's then keeping those good employees. That's the hard part that a lot of people we, you don't really hear yeah. talk about. Man, that's so good. Well, I know you guys are fixing to go eat dinner with Brian, so I want to honor your time. Thank you so much for uh, coming down here. Y'all are from Pennsylvania? Yep, yep. Like, thank we have a lot of us. people here from Pennsylvania. So thank you guys very much. And how can people connect with you on the social media? What is that TikTok handle? <laughs> Brex Enterprises on TikTok and Instagram. That's how you can find us. Brex Enterprises. Thank you guys for your time. Thank, thank you. you. Thank awesome. you, guys. Good job, Abe.